Hey, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I just wanted to show you what I've been working on uh, for this uh, first step into the Simulink models of whatever I use. Uh, first, uh, in a previous video, I've shown uh, that there's going to be the core model, which will contain all the algorithms and all that strategy-based stuff, all done in block diagrams. Now, for any simulation or Simulink model, there's typically two ends to it. There's the inflow, which is going to be obviously a market data, as well as the outflow, which is going to be how we execute our trades. This video is going to focus on the inflow. My inflow is going to be a two-step process. It's going to be basically storing ticks or historical data in a SQL Server database. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that and um, who my provider is going to be and uh, in another video I'm going to show you how you can connect MATLAB with SQL Server okay so I'm just going to do this as a quick demo uh, critical demo but this is how I'm intending to do it now here is uh, the um, the SQL Server 2008 R2 uh, server management studio okay so what I've done is I've created a database called um, market data and I'm in as the SA user the equivalent of uh, root for uh, MySQL uh, and I've got this um, as I said this database called market underscore data I've got two tables here called historical no one called tick now these are the columns for the uh, Data or for the tables for the historical timestamp. Now the timestamp here is going to be based upon the Unix timestamp. Typically, my provider is going to be IQ Feed. Uh, I'm not going to go on about why I'm using them. I've got enough videos on the YouTube channel and why that is, uh, as well as uh, the volume, closing price, and the symbol of that uh, of that uh, security that I'm uh, tracking. Now this design is not very smart. Uh, this symbol should be broken out into separate tables by uh, symbol, but I'm just trying to rapidly develop stuff. So I'm going to focus that on another time. Be like maybe I don't even think I really need to really do it because it's just for testing and development purposes. It's not going to be a typical um, uh, production or a live environment. So that's the historical data, and then we're going to have in our tick database similar stuff: timestamp, last size, total size, bid ask, and the symbol. Okay, uh, what I want you to be aware of is the decimals. Um, these are not set optimally. I know that. I'm no dummy. Um, but uh, again, these are just uh, to get things starting quickly for rapid development. All right, so that's a SQL Server database. Now, what does the actual data look like? Now, if you're smart and you've been following me, you'll figure out how I get and generate these files. Okay. And these are right from a piece of software um, that uh, is used uh, to capture the data, the real-time data from IQ feeds. Okay, this is what the first uh, database looks or table looks like, or, or it's basically divided up by a comma or comma-separated value or CSV. Now note here the data I get from IQ feeds is the actual uh, date, the string date representation. I don't want that. I'm going to have to convert that on the fly to the Unix timestamp. Uh, or at least some timestamp in, in, you know, stored in a float or a, or a double or whatever type of format I need. Um, so this is a, this, this what I just showed you is the Microsoft tick data. This underscore zero, that means it's tick, okay? Now, I've got another subdirectory of some historical data, okay? Now, what I'm going to show you here, underscore one, is Apple. Now, these are the two different types of data uh, files that you'll get. So, this is going to be a one-minute tick, uh, sorry, one-minute historical data. Um, and this is what it will look like. No different, it's a CSV. Um, and, and these files can get very, very large, okay? Now, that's one of the reasons why I'm using uh, SQL Server versus MySQL. You can use MySQL. Um, in my case, I am using SQL Server, okay? Microsoft SQL Server. So that is essentially this management studio comp 
piece of the um, SQL Server. Now, what I've done is I've taken, or I've written a little program in C Sharp that will essentially connect into the database SQL Server, okay? And I just wanted to connect to make sure I can uh, insert some data into that database, okay? So in my case, I'm just going to insert into the historical, and I'm also going to connect into the, the tick databases. These guys right here, this historical and this tick database, okay? So it's going to do a regular insert, regular insert into each table, and it's going to insert some junk data just to show that it works. Now, if I go into the, um, do a query, uh, let's say if I want to do a, a select star on the historical, okay, execute it. It's going to have some data, okay? Um, this is what I've been testing with. Works fine. Now, if I do the same thing with uh, the tick database, okay? Execute that query. It does the same thing. So this little program works. So it does connect in the database, and it inserts in the database. So my next, there's actually two steps still to, to, to be finished. Uh, First is being able to connect uh, my MATLAB into uh, the SQL Server database, this guy right here, being able to read it. The other thing is I still need to complete the source code in C Sharp, being able to convert these tick files, like if it's the MSFT uh, underscore zero, or the one minute tick I just showed you of the Apple, um, I still need to be able to finish off these little C-sharp programs, being able to uh, source, uh, read the CSV files, convert the date, as I've shown you, into the Unix timestamp, or whatever, conversion into uh, the SQL Server. Now, the reason I'm wanting uh, this guy to be a timestamp, not a string representation, not a date representation or a time uh, data type, I want it to be numeric. And the reason for that is in, in MATLAB, especially in Simulink, uh, if I'm going to use something like uh, the, uh, the, the the CSV block, the, re, the read text file CSV block in Simulink, it can only parse in numeric data. Okay, So that is why it's numeric. Uh, I'm just showing you there's a number of options you can play with. In my case, I am actually using what's put into the database, the SQL Server database, and being able to use that as a source of the inflow into my algorithms. Okay, now, if 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 I wanted to really get sophisticated, I could use SQL Server as a historical database, as a tick. Uh, I don't know. You can go all crazy and create tick factors if you want. Doesn't bother me. Um, you do what you want. You've got now the source code. Or at least my members have the source code. So that's the key. Membership has its privileges. For my Quant Lab members, they get the source code for this. They also get the source code to what creates this uh, script. Uh, let's see. I know it's somewhere in here. Uh, but there is uh, a way to generate the script from uh, SQL Server. And I've, I've included that as part of uh, for my members so they have the ability to rapidly uh, generate this database uh, and the two tables here the historical and the tick databases so you want to go ahead membership has its privileges or you want to do it the old-fashioned way go ahead and create your own data and try to reverse this engineering uh, reverse it, this engineering uh, the source code in C sharp you can probably do it through other means um, but this is the way I'm going for the Simulink uh, uh, models. Um, so hopefully it'll help you out for now. Um, more to come.